You know, I'm uh, I'm this close, Dark Gathering. I'm this close. Why do I do this to myself? What do I get by being tortured by this show? This is legitimately, and there is nothing coming close to this anytime soon, my favorite horror anime. But it makes me feel god-awful. I said it last week, that story with the kid made me feel god-awful. Most of this episode is pretty much what you expect after that. Very exciting, fun action. They decide to, like, make me feel just as awful with, yet again, another story. And I'm just left saying, why? Because, like, here's the thing about this show, is that I feel like for the remaining, I think we have four more episodes here, I'm probably just going to get progressively more negative with my titles, because one, it works as clickbait, but two, it's like legitimately how I feel. Like, this show is making me feel god-awful. The story of this Cortison and just, okay, anytime you deal with someone selling their body, and it's usually because they have to in order to make ends meet, bad family life, whatever it is, you're always going to end up with something that's probably going to make you feel uncomfortable. But when you have this, like, moment where you're almost set free, and some... Oh, man, I wish I didn't have to censor the words I want to use on YouTube. I can call her a damn bitch, I can... I, but that doesn't do it justice. Listening in from that envy, poisoning this man, doesn't even kill the man, so then he comes back swinging and beats the living hell out of her. And then, just the fact that she wanted it all for herself, and I'm like... Bruh. That's fucked. Full live reaction over on my Patreon, um, if you want to see me just... Well, I don't even know anymore, man. It's over there if you're interested. I love this show. I think Dark Gathering is a 10 out of 10, and I would recommend. Where do you even begin with an episode like this? Because you end up with this fight with the boy looking like a Digimon, and no one's gonna tell me otherwise. He looked like a damn Digimon, and I loved it. I felt bad, but I loved it. And then you end up with this woman who goes through three phases, and the idea of forcing her to look at her ugly self in order to unlock the flamethrower blaze edition is so messed up, but I can't help but say I am so utterly impressed by what they're able to do. If you remember, I think it was like maybe six videos back, give or take, I talked about how like Dark Gathering is basically like the horror version of Pokemon. I didn't come up with that comparison, I'm not taking credit for that, but I did see a lot of people when I used that comparison be like, oh, I never thought of it that way. And a lot of manga readers presented this show as the horror version of Pokemon. And it sounds weird on paper because, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, like there's some spooky things that you can do with Pokemon, but how would a horror version of Pokemon work? Well, exactly like this. You basically have three partners traveling the world, collecting gym badges in the form of legendary spirits, and we basically throw down, we throw out our Pokemon, and we just go absolutely balls to the walls and say it. And this was the most Pokemon feeling battle I think we had yet. It really just felt like he uses his move, we use our move. Sometimes we dodge. And I'm just like, at what point do we cut our losses, man? Yes, I understand. Yes, the mom, Sphere, we gotta go save her. Oh, we have our corruption on our arms. I feel like after you save the boy after dealing with this nonsense, you cut your losses, say, you know what, I'm sure mom's gonna be alright, and the arms, you know what, they are what they are, but like, holy hell. If this doesn't get a season two, I don't care if it takes five years to get a season two. I don't care if it takes five years to get two episodes more. I need this to continue. It's so good. The production is so solid. The voice acting, like on this course, and who just the way she would like, not even scream, but almost like growl. It's just so cool because you essentially had the two, it was almost like they were the same spirit, but just with slight deviations. So the boy ends up, I mean, honestly, I feel like... He has potential, if he was left unchecked, to become the most deadly spirit on this earth. In time. It could take generations. But the idea of basically, like, any attack that he does on someone turns it into meatballs, it becomes nourishment, and he just becomes stronger. I feel like, in theory, this is the type of character that, left unchecked for a thousand years, would become an unstoppable force. But I love the fact that on her side as well, instead of, like, going the meatball route, it's these butterflies and the soul sucking. It's like... You know, of course, it's a play on uh, innu innuendos given uh, her prior job and everything. But the idea of, like, if you touch those, then... So it's kind of, like, interesting because what he ended up doing was... So after he eats her, it pretty much poisons his blood, right? So every time he hits her or whatever, he gets a new plate of meatballs, he eats it. And what ended up happening around the midway point, give or take, was basically 
the idea that he knew that he was getting hurt by eating the meatballs, but he also needed it in order to power through. So he would eat it, try to get in as much damage, and it was basically survival of the fittest. And it was really cool to see the back and forth. And I wasn't really expecting anything too intense this episode in terms of backstory, because I kind of felt like they got that out of the way. And legitimately, like 18 minutes of this episode or so isn't really hard to stomach because like we're used to it at this point. Like, yeah, it's it sucks. Like, there was only one moment that shook me prior to the new backstory, and that was what happened to Aiko when we got to see what happened in that bathroom. Now, we knew the crunching sounds was them cutting up bodies and doing what they did, but seeing it from behind the door like that and just the sound, even when they barged in, there was no blood. Like, that was incredibly, it was unnerving. It felt like bugs crawling under your skin. It, it got to me. It absolutely did. But besides that, I felt like this episode pretty much played with what it did last week, and that's fine. I was like, give me the big action episode. Let me cool down. And they did that, and then they just sideswiped me and said, hey, we're gonna give you something equally disturbing. When you look at the boy and, like, what he's doing, it's evil, technically, right? Like, he's killing people, turning them into meatballs, and just, like, he needs to be stopped. But at the same time, like I said last week, I mean, the poor bass, who wouldn't become an evil spirit when your dad brings home that type of wench and it just ruins the family Christmas? Like, of course he would. And just the idea that I can feel so god-awful while simultaneously being like, next up, oh, there's no next episode, gotta wait seven days. This show's gonna be wild on a rewatch, that's all I'm saying, but this was another 10 out of 10 episode. I really feel like between episodes 20 to 25, it's just gonna be the best of Dark Gathering. It's just gonna go absolutely insane because basically the, the gloves are off. Child time, play time's over. It's just, it's just nonsense after nonsense, and honestly, as bad as this show makes me feel, I'm addicted to the pain. I'm basically just saying, you know what, whip me. Go ahead get it over with i'm liking it at this point and goddamn this show is 10 out of 10 and no one's convincing me otherwise i'm so thankful that this show has done as well as it has done now this isn't a show that's like topping charts every week but you have to admit especially if you've been paying attention to the anime community recently anytime something gets a second core whether that carries into the next season of where it started or it comes back these types of shows just don't do well anymore for discussion but I think it really helps because horror is so untapped in terms of potential anymore. Like, yeah, we had the new Higurashi, and there's certain shows that pop up that, you know, do hit that sweet spot. But we don't get a lot of great horror anime. And I think at this point, this is an amazing, if not a masterpiece of one. And it's really cool to see everyone talk about it week after week because this has become one of my favorites to discuss this year. And I would gladly purchase a Blu-ray if they give me an option in North America. Thoughts and feelings yourself down below. <sighs> Boy, we're gonna have an exciting one next week, I'm sure. The past two episodes breaking me emotionally. You might as well just kill the whole damn family while you're at it. But thoughts yourself, leave a like, subscribe, you know the drill, Patreon, got the live reaction, and I also give video shoutouts. Alright, so today we got Selkie, Pixel Caliber, Janice Mary, Nolan Palmer, Sign, Slim Shady One, Raj Vermullins, and Diedrich Savant. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Take care, and don't eat those meatballs.